Hello, like everybody. That, Hello, everybody. How are y'all doing this morning? Good. Very good. Some of my favorite people are here. Oh, my gosh. I have to step up my game this morning. I, th I thought it was only for favorites. Oh, well. <laughs> special, special rate on that, you know. <laughs> Same rate. <laughs> Well, good morning to everybody. I'm so glad y'all are with us for this first launch of our Vitality Collective, what we're calling The Circle. And uh, this will be uh, about an hour of some discussion on branding and marketing your school. And we're also going to have it available on our website as we move to uh, offering more of these in the future. I want to say thank you for being here this morning. Uh, with all your busy schedules. Uh, Maria Enzarella is with me this morning as my partnership associate, and she'll be handling some of the questions, or if you put something in the chat box, we can respond to that as well. So we're going to do about 30 minutes of branding and marketing discussion, and then open the floor for the final 20, 30 minutes on questions, discussion, uh, anything that you're thinking about, anything we can help you with, what you're doing in your school, what has worked for you, uh, and, and we'll offer this, uh, we'll have this on our website uh, also. Okay. We're going to wait a few minutes and we're going to begin in just a moment with a prayer and welcome. Okay, let us begin on this 18th day of the Lenten season. How's your Lenten season going? How are you doing in your Lenten journey this year? As we talked about, this is a time of discovery, challenge, acts, and growth. Discovery, challenge, acts, and growth. Uh, we're writing about this on our uh, website. There's a lot of new offerings now at Catholic Vitality 360, and uh, please uh, take a look at those. Uh, our goal here is simply one thing, and that is to help you in your school and parish and diocesan ministry. And so let's begin, as always, with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Dear Lord, we come to you today during this Lenten season, a time of discovery and challenge. Help us to think about this time of growth with the acts of our Lenten sacrifice, to be a person of Christ, to bring Christ to the center of our lives, to be an example of Christ in our families, in our positions, in our school, in all the places we go, as our goal continues to be to imitate Christ in good works and reaching out to others. Thank you for all the sacrifices of all those here, for the late nights and the early mornings, and the sacrifices they've made to the ministry of Catholic schools. We ask you to bless them in their journey and give them the fortitude and perseverance to pursue the rest of the year with enthusiasm, a smile in their heart, and always knowing that an interaction with someone can transform their lives. For this we pray. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So once again, welcome. Uh, there are some people here that I really uh, have gotten to know over the years, my friends and some good people in the world of Catholic schools. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, some of the logistics are going to be that uh, we try to do this uh, at least once or twice a month. And um, if you have a topic or something you'd like to discuss, this is uh, a little bit of instruction, but also a time of getting to know each other, a place to learn, a place to share, a place to grow, a place to collaborate, and a place to discover. And as you all know, uh, myself, Bernard Dumont, you know that this is a ministry for me. And if you're struggling or finding challenges in your work, uh, we are here for you. Uh, that's a sincere and honest statement. Uh, we're doing this for you and for the ministry that you work in, the, the church, building communities of faith. And our goal is to build thriving communities of faith in your school, in your parish, and in your diocese. So uh, this is very sincere. We're, we've created this collaborative and collective for, for you. Uh, please do not feel that you're ever alone and that you're struggling uh, in isolation. 
Uh, we have been doing this for many years, as some of you know, and I've seen everything. <laughs> there is nothing in the world of Catholic schools that can surprise me anymore. And what we try to focus on is solutions. Okay, our goal is solutions. Doesn't matter how you got here. Uh, it's more about where you're going. And so uh, we're focused on solutions. So uh, please email us, uh, call me. I will come to your school if I can and help you in your diocese or in your parish and uh, happy to provide uh, these resources. So let's jump into some of the uh, items that I'd like to share in terms of branding and marketing your school. I love this quote by Wayne Dyer, which is, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And perhaps you've been operating for some time with a certain perspective on marketing and branding. And it's, it's time to sort of open that perspective to perhaps a new way of connecting with families and a new way of telling your story. Very simply, what we're going to talk about today is how to tell your story. Because your school, your diocese has a story. And it's our ability to translate that story that's going to make all the difference. I also like to share with you a perspective that I use a lot in our workshops. Marie and I were doing a workshop series uh, the last several months uh, right here in Louisiana, Diocese of Lake Charles. And this really resonated with people. And I'll share this with you as a way to approach not only your work, but your life and your ministry. So what we like to talk about is that there are events in your life that happen. And those things happen sometimes, uh, whether you can control them or not, but events take place and you are in a position then to respond to them. It may be something in your personal life, even your professional life at your school, at your office, something happening that things simply happen on a daily basis. It's not so much that they happen, but our response to them. So let's just say that you're experiencing uh, low enrollment in your school, or you have a budget challenge in your school, you have an enrollment challenge, or you have a, a challenge in the classroom with teachers. Those are events that are taking place. But what we want you to understand is that your response to these events will determine the outcomes. And what we want to share with you in terms of marketing and branding and through these discussions is the right response to achieve a desired outcome. If you want enrollment to increase, there is a response to that challenge. And there are best practices to that challenge that we will share with you. And a lot of people have told us that it's not so much what you shared with us, but it's also what not to do. We also like to tell you that these are not best practices and your energy and time is finite. And we want to put you on the path to success with best practices that we've learned. And we've been experimenting and learning about these for 25 years. I know what works and what doesn't. And that response will produce a desired outcome, better marketing, higher enrollment, teacher retention, income, budget, all of that is on the table. So it's not what happens to you, it's what you do with that that makes all the difference. And are you ready for this, right? Are you ready to address these challenges? And that's a very important point. So some of the ways to respond when things happen, the event, right? The E is the event, these things happen. And then find the truth, okay? Let's not just sort of go off and, and have an initial response. Is it true that this is happening, right? The second one I really like, no blaming, right? We're not gonna blame someone or, or do that. We're gonna move forward, okay? No complaints. We'll look at best options. We build all of this into the process, okay? Build the mission, ask yourself, if this, if, is this building the mission of the school? Is this decision, what we call strategic thinking, does this decision build the mission of our Catholic school? Does it promote vitality and growth? And then once we ask those questions, we arrive at the response, then we get to work, right? We get to work and we get the job done. 
And so the response that we like to share with you, whatever is going on in your school, okay, the response is rooted in this concept of school vitality. The response should always be, is this going to be a good decision for my school? Is it going to promote growth and sustainability? Okay, not going backwards, but moving forward. Sometimes those are difficult decisions about personnel, maybe a teacher, maybe about someone in the building, maybe about a parent. But we're simply asking that we keep the mindset of school vitality in mind. Okay. And this is something we have promoted for years. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. This will be the subject of our next uh, collaborative session, the circle. It'll be uh, March 31st. It's a Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, we're going to dive into the seven circles of Catholic vitality. And this particular one, we have one for the parish, we have one for the school, which you see here, and we have one for the diocese, okay? And these are the elements that we measure to define school vitality. And so we have the seven circles, and I want you to, to put this on your desk, make a copy of it. Uh, you can download it from our website. It also has an assessment scorecard. And I'm presenting this this year at NCEA in Dallas, and this will be part of my talk. But each school, all the schools in our workshops and all the schools in our partnerships, we begin with this assessment scorecard. And we ask our leadership team to complete this individually and then come together as a group and compare their scores and go through each one of the seven circles and give each component a score of one, which is it's not evident in the school, up to four, which is highly functional in the school. And then if you do this on our website, it'll calculate your overall score. And then you can share that with your group. The idea is that it begins a conversation. And I've had schools in the workshop series do this three times a year, in September, in January, and in June. And hopefully what? Your score is going up because the highest score here is 140. And we have a little, a little, a little notes at the bottom on if you're a school, if you get a certain score of 80 or below, we call that a red school, right? Immediate intervention is required, emergency intervention. The yellow score, 81 to 100, uh, 109, and then green is 110 plus. And so it's okay wherever you are, okay? The, the purpose of this is to agree on the current state of the school as a team. We as a team declare that we are a, we received a score of 97. So we have some things to work on, right? We're gonna look at the ones and twos on the scale and begin to put in place a process to address those. So this is a really important tool for you to use as part of our services to you. And also uh, online, you can get this and your team can work on it. Starts a conversation, and then we talk about areas of growth and improvement, okay? And so particularly today, this is, this is the circle on communication and marketing. This is one of the seven circles. And these are the five components that you're measuring in marketing. So let's begin to talk about uh, this marketing piece or the branding piece, okay? And so these are measurements. This is what we look for initially uh, in terms of measuring these items or marketing in your school, okay? First of all, is there a clear sense of branding with your school? Is there a logo? Is there a good website? Are you articulating your competitive advantage and value proposition in your materials, right? And we score that one, two, three, or four, four the highest. Let's look at the logo. Is it, is it uh, you know, 25 years old and difficult to see and athletics has a different logo and the parent group has a different logo and there's, there's 17 different t-shirt logos around the building and, and really all you need is one, <laughs> okay? You need a very clear marketing image, okay? Let's look at the website as a marketing tool. That's an important piece of wisdom today. The website as a marketing tool. Parents are on your website right now 
prospective parents are on the site right now making judgments about your school, whether to call the school or to take the next step or to go to the open house right now. Is it cluttered? Is it old? Does it have, you know, Merry Christmas on the on the opening, you know, homepage? Okay. Of course, Christmas was four months ago. Okay. So who's updating the website? Okay. All that. Do you have active social media platforms that are up to date? Who's responsible for social media platforms, right? We recommend a marketing committee in place with formation, meaning that they're being trained. If you'd like us to help you with that, we can. You need parents and alumni and friends from the community and from the parish to serve on the marketing committee. We have found over the years that there is a wealth of talent and expertise in your community. You have parents in your building that run marketing firms, do their own marketing, run businesses. They can help you. If nothing else, word of mouth. Okay, they can start talking about the school in a strategic way, not just we love the school, but why? Okay, to neighbors and friends. Okay, you have a marketing plan. What's the status of that plan? What's the status of that plan on March 7th, 2023? Is it being implemented? Okay, who's implementing? Is it strategic? Okay, what's the marketing budget look like? Okay, well, we have no budget. Well, <laughs> we need a budget. Okay, we need to push out content. We need to communicate. We need to update. Okay, and then uh, ongoing evaluations. Okay. We also ask you to conduct this. This is one of the tools we use when we look at schools and marketing is the win analysis. This is exclusive to us. We created this. Uh, beyond the SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T, this is our version of that. What is working well, areas of improvements, and next steps, okay? You can have this, you can use it, you can evaluate any school process, particularly here uh, this morning for marketing, it does work. And so we just wanted to uh, give you a, a, a definition, right? And some key words here, because I'm not going to read it for in the interest of time, but Marketing and communication for your school is systematic, comprehensive, and well executed. Not just, um, you know, we're, we're going to hope it all works out and, and, and hopefully we get some good social media posting. Okay. It's systematic, it's comprehensive, it's well executed. We know that we have an annual marketing plan, we have a monthly marketing plan, and we have a Monday morning marketing plan. What's happening today is Tuesday. What is happening today? What are you pushing out? What are you saying? What are you writing? What is out there in terms of telling the story of your school? Okay. The mission, the purpose, its values, its vision, its market advantages. Tell me and don't be shy. I had schools tell me years ago, we're the best kept secret in town. I said, well, that's not a goal, <laughs> okay? The, the goal is not to be the best kept secret in town. The, the goal is to be known and to be known for your mission and ministry and your good works and, and the students and parents and this, this vibrant community of faith, right? We also know that there is a disposition for marketing, right? And we begin this disposition of marketing with, with making sure that the school's mission is paramount. That's what you're marketing, right? We don't have to go far to find it. It's right here. The mission is the first piece of content in marketing. Tell us what your mission is. We don't have to find it. It's right there. Then we begin to push out things like, what we do at school, we, 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 are, we are a community of faith, academic excellence, impressive faculty, academic innovation, service to the community. What, what do you do? That's, that's content. Also, who we do it for. We do it for students and families to get them to heaven, to be more like Christ, to put Christ at the center of their lives. That's who we do it for. OK, uh, the way we do it and show them with pictures and content. Here's the way we do things at our school. This is the way we do it. And we are a Catholic school. 
And then finally, why we do it. Okay, this is why we do it. So we take that disposition of the mission of the school. We formulate the content around the what, who, way, and why. And then that becomes a marketing plan and strategy. That becomes content. Okay. And I have a series of components here that you can see, and we could spend lots more time going through this. And I'll unpack some of this as we get into further sessions, because in the enrollment piece that I'll do uh, in April, uh, we'll go over some of the marketing pieces, okay, as well. But there are components, okay? We need leadership, commitment from our leadership. We need to understand the marketplace, our unique difference. We need some branding statements. We need a marketing team. We need a game plan, and we need to evaluate, okay? And those are things that I promote. I also think we can't do it all. We need to establish three to five marketing goals, right? Here's an example of a school that created three marketing goals, right? Goal number one was to build enrollment, reach their goal of a net growth every year. Net means plus, not just gathering students, uh, the number of students you graduated or, or enrolling them, but what is your plus net goal? Is it one, is it two, is it three or, or 10, okay? And so, yes, you can replace your graduates and those that leave the school, but we want at least, I, I look for a plus one goal, minimum, <laughs> replace your graduates and the attrition of families plus one, okay? And maybe that's the first year goal because it's new and you need some help, okay? The second goal, drive more traffic to our school website, okay? Uh, we need to do that and track that. And then we need a bigger marketing budget. Do not let finances stop you. I'm going to go through some examples that really cost nothing. Okay. Before we close, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you sample uh, strategies that schools can implement that basically do not cost anything, but can be very powerful. And if you've done this, you know, perhaps what, where we're going with this. And, and where I'm going with this is that word of mouth marketing by what we call raving fans, your raving fans, right, is gold. And it can be done at little to no cost other than some training. I had a school that uh, put together a brochure style on a business card, okay, because no one carries the school brochure, but they can carry information on a business card about the school and when they were at the ball field or a game or the grocery store or Christmas dinner or Easter celebration, they carry the cards. The raving fans carry the cards. They get some training. You print 500 business cards from Vista print for, you know, $9, $10, $20. You can get that donated and you can give out these little brochures for your school name, address, website, and some bullet points about how great you are. And the raving fans are giving those out. And a number of schools have done that and have been very uh, happy with the results. So as I mentioned, your approach to marketing is strategic, intentional, and deliberate. Okay, Clear messaging, target audiences, key platforms. Things go out during certain seasons of the year. Last year at NCEA, my talk was the four seasons of Catholic school marketing, right? So I'm going to show you how to organize the school calendar around the seasons of the year so that you simply can plan this, right? So it is right now the spring season. March is spring season of the year, March, April, May, right? And that, that, that's a particular important time in the school year. This is all about enrollment right now. Okay. Enrollment, registration, follow up, parents who came to the open house, who's inquiring, follow up, tours, all of that right now. It's a push. Okay. And we have to be strategic. Who's doing that? Who's on the tour? What do we say on the tour? What do we leave behind with them? Who follows up, right? Who contacts them? Very strategic, right? Some key questions 
that you can begin to answer. I, I address question one quite often because many Catholic schools all look the same. We've been the same, we look the same, we've been on the same address for you know 100 years and people drive by and they really don't see what's going on. Are we just drowning in a sea of educational sameness? We look like a public school, we look like a charter school, we look like every other school, we know it's a school, okay? But what does it mean to put a cross out front? You know, we're a Catholic school, the sign, your logo, okay? What is your unique difference, right? You have to articulate your unique difference and value proposition. What is your advantage in the marketplace? What do you do differently than anybody else? And, and sit with, with your team and, and create these statements of value. This is what we're about. We're an authentically Catholic school that want to bring souls to heaven, get souls to heaven. We do it in a number of different ways. People think we are just about academic excellence, which we are, but we have a higher mission and a more important mission than grades and test scores. And that's unique and different, okay? Number four, what are the words and phrases that describe your mission and vision? And put those down on paper. Are your parents raving fans? You need to get your parents motivated and mobilized around being raving fans. Do we have a monthly plan of marketing and enrollment? SEM is is strategic enrollment management, which you can't have an enrollment plan without a marketing plan because it's, it's communication, marketing, enrollment. Communication, then marketing, then enrollment. There's general communication about your school, then there is marketing your school, and then the, the enrollment piece is very strategic. And number seven, I will ask you this periodically over the course of our time, uh, is enrollment the school's number one priority, okay? And I'll share some more with you on that in a moment, and I'll share with you why. One of the things I wanted to address that, that I've worked with a number of schools on is, is what we call these logo standards, right? So take a moment right now to just assess, you know, where this is in your school, and you can see where we're going with this, is that your school has standards based on your logo, how to use them, what colors to use, the options we use. And there's not that many, there's maybe three to four different options, okay? But look at athletics, look at the parent groups, look at all those fundraising groups and what is out there on behalf of your school. Maybe it's time to, to begin a assessment of all your, all your messaging and logo and, and all those, those visual images and what this basically says are these are the options for our parents, for our athletic department, for all of our outgoing visual images, these are the options. These are the colors. And it streamlines, it makes it a lot easier than people finding things online that may represent your school, but it's not your logo. And I hear this all the time in our, in our school work that somebody's found something online and they put it on a t-shirt and people think that's our new logo, okay? So be very careful about this and I can help you with that. There's a series of, uh, of statements here that I call branding statements that you need to create, okay? And these are important because once they're established and these are statements made about your school that you all create like this, and you can, you can take these if you like, and make them your own, but these are the four, five, or six statements that will then be translated into your marketing plan, okay? So it's sort of like what I said before, who are we and what we're about, who do we serve? We're a Catholic school possessing strong Catholic identity and mission, equipped to serve the local region on global Catholic church, okay? You take that statement and turn it into marketing strategies. That goes on your website. That is a mailer, that is a letter, that is a media posting, that's a video, okay? That's said at the open house, that's said during Catholic Schools Week. These are the statements that form the foundation of your marketing plan. And it doesn't change much, okay? Academic excellence, faculty, I have six of them here, I like five or six, okay? 
if you're building the the house of marketing this is the foundation okay this is the foundation this is what your marketing plan is built upon improving our programs facilities community of selfless service uh, we permeate our spirit with extracurricular. Okay. These are the components of the marketing plan. Then we then turn that into strategy and, and move forward with that. Uh, this is something I can send you. If you need anything, let me know. I'll send you any of these resources. Just email us and we'll get it out to you. This is something I use a lot to organize the school year, right? So you can see it, right? We have We have four seasons and this is how you organize your marketing plan, right? We have the summer, the fall, the, the winter and spring. We're in spring right now, that's obviously green, okay? These are the components that you address. These are the elements of marketing that you address during these seasons. So it's, it takes the guesswork out of, well, what are we doing in March? What are we doing in September? What are we doing in October, okay? So you build your marketing plan around these themes. So let's just take the spring, right? What's the stay of the school? You've got eighth grade, senior spotlights. You've got spring sports. You've got school ambassadors. You've got an enrollment push. You've got digital marketing strategies. You've got promotional alerts. You've got follow up with all your families, prospective families, right? You've got an open house. You just came out of Catholic Schools Week, right? And Catholic Schools Week is in the winter, season three big push on marketing for Catholic Schools Week, okay? So I can help you with it. Just let us know what you need. Uh, you can get this form, get your committee, get your team together and start putting your, your plan together, right? It's also important to know why parents enroll in your school, right? And this, this is based on a number of surveys, uh, of course, why parents decide to enroll. And these are the top four reasons, right? So why this? Why is this important to know? Because if you know why parents decide to enroll, these are the components of your marketing plan. You want to be pushing this out as messages. I mean, every week we're a safe and caring school. We love these kids, right? We love these students. We love our families. It's safe to be here. We care for them and we love them right? Push, push, push that out, right? Academic excellence all the time. Uh, accelerated reader, uh, all these things happening in classroom, science lab, reading all this field trips, all of that good content. We're, we're very concerned about a, an atmosphere of academic excellence, right? Catholic values pushed out. What's our mission, right? And then we're, we're a choice over other options, right? I don't, have to, I don't have to pick on public schools, nothing wrong with that, public education, but we're different and showcase the difference, okay? And then we have the items in the toolkit, okay? We have the items in the marketing toolkit. And these are following this progression today of the school's mission is paramount, the who, the what, and the how, and the why, right, questions, the branding statements, we turn all of that into these various strategies. The toolkit is simply pulling out the strategies, right? We have a marketing calendar, the four seasons. We've got our school website. We've got print media. We've got social media. We've got advertising, press releases, mailings, open houses. The okay, Th This is what is created once you do the evaluations, you understand your mission, you start answering some questions, you have the branding statements, and then the marketing plan has a series of strategies, okay? Annual strategies, monthly strategies, Monday morning strategies, okay? And test these out. Which ones work well at our school? A website, we're doubling down on the website, We've got some good print media. We've got to do some advertising, some social media. We've got a raving fan group that we really love. They're talking it up. Okay. Got a good open house. We really figured out a good tour structure. Okay. These are the, these are the tools in the toolkit. Okay. I wanted to share that with you. Okay. Also knowing your audience. Okay. On the elementary and, and high school level, uh, we, we are 
connecting with this group that is called millennials, okay, ages 25 through 40, now are, are in our schools, okay? So think about their needs, okay? They're looking for value, okay? They do a lot of online research. They rely on their networks. They ask people their opinions. They value experiences, okay? And they're willing to invest in that. They prefer digital formats and they're concerned about health and safety, okay? This is your prospective parent group. So the question is you take, how can we take all of those tools in the toolbox and then knowing your audience to translate those tools and those messages into these connections. Talk about research about your school, the value of your school. Talk about other parents, testimonials, the value of a Catholic school experience, right? If, if we believe that something's valuable, we invest in it. Think of the things in your life that you've invested in. Those are, those are value statements for you. Okay, they prefer digital formats. They're not going to fill out the form and bring it over to school. They want it online. They want it on the website. Is it online? When do I have to turn it in? Okay, go on to digital formats and then very concerned about health and safety while their children are in your school. Okay, so just knowing that from a marketing perspective. And then we talk about this amplify piece to amplify marketing just beyond paper and social media is this group of ambassadors. One of the things to take away today is even if you start with one or two or three ambassadors, parent ambassadors, alumni ambassadors, grandparent ambassadors, then this increases your connections and conversations times three, times four, times five, times six, times seven in the community where they're talking to neighbors and friends. They can share media. They can have conversations. They can grow connections. We talk about the Good News Network, being intentional about spreading good news and then raving fans, okay? So I've got a couple more things and then we'll open the floor to questions. Uh, these are just some of the action items that you can take away from today and I can help you with those. Uh, understand your target market and groups within that market, like the millennial group our parishioners, our religious ed families, okay? Create a marketing and logo standards piece that everybody can agree on, okay? Number three, secure your messaging statements that I had earlier, these uh, five or six statements that will inform the marketing push. Create a marketing plan uh, around the four seasons of, of, of the year, which I illustrated earlier, and then execute it, have a plan to execute it, have people actually to do the work, um, actually the who and all of that, okay, and when, okay. Now here's the, the piece I just wanted to finish up with in terms of enrollment. And I know it sounds provocative and dramatic, but it is absolutely true that enrollment is everything and everything is enrollment. When you think about it, if we don't have students in the building, we don't have a mission to translate. And the mission of the school doesn't exist. So we must focus our efforts on enrollment and telling that story. And every decision, every lesson plan, every student or parent interaction is, is building and sustaining enrollment, is telling stories and inviting people to join us. And so it's absolutely true that enrollment is the piece. We can do everything else well, but if we don't focus on enrollment and getting families into our school, then we will not have academic excellence or our religious life or trying to get, you know, saints to heaven and the mission of our Catholic school. So a, a big piece of this is to, to for your teachers and your faculty and staff to understand that enrollment is critical. And I can help you with that. Okay. I also think that marketing can be summed up in this piece, that we need to make the positive elements of our school so loud that the negative becomes almost impossible to hear. It doesn't mean that there are that there may be some negative things happening. People may not always act in the best way possible. Sometimes there's challenges, 
but we push out the positive and that creates a very positive atmosphere. Okay. All right. So we, we, we did a little snapshot of marketing. Uh, I feel like I'm just getting started in some ways, but that was a little snapshot. Um, and, and I wanted to spend our remaining time, about 20 or so minutes, on share time. And uh, you can share with us uh, any questions, any successes you've experienced, any best practices, any wisdom that you have taken from this, or any insights. And so uh, Maria is going to help me with this and uh, we can we can move on to that. Um, if you'd like to speak, you can. Uh, there's not. Let's see. There's 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 a nice group, but I think we're willing to listen. If you if you willing to share, you can. I've got some other things, questions and things that we can also address uh, as well. So um, if you want to get started, go ahead. Who, who would like to start? Does anybody want to get started? Just jump right in. Um, I have a, a question for you right away, Bernard, is okay. um, I'm working with a, a school that's really struggling. Um, so I'm just wondering, I know you're recording this and I'm trying to provide their board and their leadership resources because I can't be out there every day. Right. But is this something that is going to be accessible to us that I could use this as a resource, this video or this recording? Yes, everything on our website is free and at no cost to any school or parish. So we're going to put this... We started some blogging and some other things uh, about a month ago, and all this will be on the website uh, and you can use it. There's no cost to it. Um, and yeah, you, you can play it. Uh, you can show it to them. Yes, it'll be on our website. And by the way, uh, this is Jamie Hahn from the Diocese of Green Bay. Uh, she didn't introduce herself, so I did. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but but if, if, if tell us who you are and where you're from uh, as you begin to, to ask a question or provide some wisdom. But the answer, Jamie, is yes. All this will be on our website. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. OK, what else? Questions, best practices, wisdom, insights? Floor is open. Well, I'll just add as well, Bernard, that, you know, we've worked with you off and on uh, when I was in the Diocese of Madison for lots of years, but getting this type of material and mindset and the right folks involved really helped us, you know, increase our enrollment and our name in the community. I mean, we went from 121 kids to 170 when I left. I think they're at 185, 190 um, within the last couple of years from a 121, so it, it works. And, and I would say, uh, Jamie, to follow up on that, that, you know, Jamie was a very busy principal at her school, St. Mary's in Portage, Wisconsin, and had all the intentions in the world to grow enrollment and marketing. And it was it was that committee that we put together that really created the spark that ignited this this whole process. So if you're a principal or even a development person, that it feels like you just can't get the momentum and that there's just too many hours in the day and your to-do list just keeps growing, but you simply can't make progress. I would say that find one or two or three people in your school community that have a love of the school and maybe they have some marketing experience or maybe they're, they run a business and start a conversation with them about how do we build a marketing plan how do we execute a marketing plan? What is needed? And that that will grow. And so uh, Jamie's exactly right. She was very busy. She was doing a great job as principal, but needed that committee to really move it forward. And um, I, I know it may sound like one more thing, but what is your goal, right? What 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 is, if we keep doing the same things, we'll always end up in the same place. And so perhaps this is a catalyst or uh, a time to say, you know, I do want to do some things differently because I, I want a different result. And in order to get a different result, I need to change the way I'm doing things. And so um, let's talk about that. I, 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 my, my phone number is here on the screen. I answer my phone. <laughs> as, you, as you all know, I'm in service to Catholic schools. And, and send me something. Send me an email. I'll, I'll help you with it. So... Uh, just just to, to make that decision that we're going to get some more people involved in this is a very important decision. 
So I well, had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Doug. I, yeah, I, I, that's a good um, summary. I mean, this is what I've been thinking as I watch this, uh, because unfortunately, I'm the committee of, of one at my school in development. And of course, um, we my, my school was in uh, ground zero for the Archdiocese of New Orleans for Hurricane Ida. But we're moving from recovery now to uh, to hopefully growth. And uh, I, I see is the number one thing that I need is that that committee that's uh, active in uh, participating in uh, promoting the school, whether it's enrollment or, or fundraisers um, and so on. Yeah, we, we cannot do it alone. And, and you know, God doesn't want us to do it alone either. I mean, we, we have so much talent in our, in our parent base. And begin to think about all those people, even, even in the alumni. We think sometimes, well, alumni have come and gone in our school and, and they're busy with their lives. But, you know, it has never failed me over these 20 plus years that, you know, people do want to help your school. And there is a, an abundance of gifts and talents, I believe, waiting for your invitation. And I've said that in, over the years, and, and, and people have come back to me and said, you know what? It works. It, it does work, but we, we reach out. People who have a heart that wants to help you are waiting for your invitation. And so it's not just on you, like reach out to people and, and ask them. One of the greatest questions in life is, um, would you help me with this? Right? One of the greatest questions is, you know, could you help me with this? I mean, <laughs> it's hard for me to say no to that question. And we're all busy. But, but when someone comes to you sincere and says, I need your help. It is powerful. I have a pastor that Maria and I are working with right now that, you know, his his parish is going through a $8 million capital campaign. And he simply began to ask people for help. Never mentioned money, didn't mention the cost of the church and all these financial details. He simply went from family to family and said, I need your help. And they're at 7.2 million based on that question because they're helping the pastor with this vision to build a new church. So there are people that do want to help you. Okay. Any other questions, success stories, best practices, any wisdom from the group? Floor is open. Okay. I had a question uh, from the chat and uh, the question is that I'll share with you. Uh, our school is on a limited budget. Uh, what are the essentials that we should be focusing on to create a marketing plan? Okay, excellent question. <laughs> I don't know any Catholic school that's not on a limited budget. So this question uh, applies to, to all of us in a way. Okay, and we Catholic schools do a great job with, with budget management. So uh, here would be my response to that. And, and I would say that, you know, you've got to invest some some of your budget, uh, most of your budget in a good website, okay? And you can get sponsors for that site and you can get donations for that site and you can get business community members to help you. But, uh, you know, goal number one is to maintain a very good website that is not only informational to your parents and parishioners and friends, but also a marketing strategy. Because as I said at the outset, parents right now are going to your website to learn about your school. If it's outdated or if it doesn't work or they can't navigate it or they can't fill something out or schedule a tour or interact with someone. I mean, I'm amazed that, you know, how many Catholic school websites don't have pictures and you can't get an email or you can't contact someone. I mean, we live in that connected world that we want to contact the principal or the or the marketing person or set up a tour or ask about cafeteria and all these things you know safety it, it should be interactive so i would say first invest in a good website the second thing i would ask you is to um, create an experience with an open house and a tour that is the wow factor okay 
it doesn't cost very much to have an open house. It doesn't cost very much to do a fantastic tour. And really double down when you're inviting people on campus to, to tour the school. It's like having company over at the house, right? We're going to tidy things up. We're going to make things look good. We're going to be on our best behavior. And we're going to do a great job to tell them our story. And I believe that we should have other people on the tour than just the marketing person or the advancement or development director. We should have a teacher on the tour. We should have a coach on the tour. We should have other instructional staff on the tour to really interact with the parents. We should have students on the tour of the age and grade level of that student. And that's who they're talking to during the tour getting the inside scoop on uniforms and cafeteria food and what's it really like in the fourth grade around here, right? So invest in a good website, pay close attention to your open house and uh, tour structure, and then begin working on social media that doesn't cost very much, all the, all the platforms, get that going with raving fans, and then I would get strategic about uh, creating this ambassador group. OK, in every grade level, you should have two to three ambassadors, parent ambassadors that are trained. They know what to talk about. They actually are committed to being an ambassador. They love your school and they're out there uh, speaking about that in good terms. The final thing I would say that doesn't cost very much is to look closely at religious education families in the parish. And people have asked me, you know, what's the number one thing? I said, well, Let's not forget that religious education parents are in your parish and they value their Catholic faith. If we could try to address their concerns, maybe they don't know we have scholarships or they don't know we have, you know, uh, a plan for parents, uh, uh, payment schedules and it's affordable and we have uh, tuition assistance and other options. They may be afraid to come to us because they're embarrassed about their inability to pay the full cost of tuition. And I've learned from religious ed parents that even though we have all this information on the web pages and we talk about tuition assistance and come see us, that we really have to keep saying that over and over again. So I would say, uh, once again, good website, focus on open house and tours, get your ambassador groups in place, social media platforms, and uh, let's, let's get in touch with our religious ed families and connect with them. Okay. Any other questions from the group? Are there any questions, Maria, in the chat that, that we have? I think you're muted, but go ahead. When I click on the chat, I'm not getting, oh, there we go. Okay. Hello. But yeah, I don't see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So are there any uh, items of wisdom and things that you've done that have worked well? Uh, wisdom or best practices or something you're thinking about? Uh, also in line with this question about our school has a limited budget, what would be some things that we could do immediately to, to push out a good marketing process? Any, any successes or, or wisdom from the group? Any insights, anything that you've done that you would like to do again or like to do a better job with? Anything that you're thinking about right now, any challenges you're facing that we can help you with? Okay. Um, Bernard, I guess I yes. would just add that since I've changed roles, um, obviously I've worked as a uh, school principal in Catholic schools, but now at the diocesan level, it is interesting as I visit with 50 plus schools, um, the resources, the personnel, um, just the vision that everybody is, is sitting kind of in a different spot. We have some schools that are just struggling to maintain life. And of course, they're not growing in that sense. And then, you know, other schools in our diocese have complete uh, their system schools. And so they have entire departments uh, dedicated to advancement and enrollment. Um, so it, there's just such a wide range out there uh, within our own local area. 
So it's trying to tap into some of those resources, provide education for those smaller schools, especially who are doing everything, but they could really grow. They just don't have, you know, the personnel. So getting those volunteers, get asked those direct ask versus putting something in a newsletter about I need people on this committee, that's going to get you nowhere. But that direct asking people eyeball eyeball seems to uh, help immensely of getting folks on board. Right. And Jamie uh, represents the Diocese of Green Bay, uh, Wisconsin. And I would say uh, a couple of things there, Jamie, to follow up on, on what you said, which was very insightful that, you know, the diocese does have resources. And sometimes we think the diocese is way over there or not in touch with us. But there are some great resources at the diocese that um, if you look them up, they're, they're in the business of helping schools, right, and helping parishes. So, you know, when we work with dioceses, uh, we, we begin to learn that there's great resources there. Um, and I would also say, uh, second to that, other schools. You know, we're, we're, we're not reinventing school marketing, right? There are uh, thousands of schools, not only in, in, in your part of the country and other parts of the country, in your diocese, in your region, that are doing the same things. And we did some work in the Diocese of Madison uh, several years ago on this, where we paired schools up together. We, we paired them up with with uh, the same size schools and, and geographically uh, oriented schools that were uh, compatible enrollment. And we simply had a series of mentoring sessions with, with other Catholic schools. And we, we then moved around each table and each school shared their best practices and what they were working on and their questions and their success stories and their wisdom and all of that. And, um, you know, a lot of schools came away from that thinking, well, you know, we're not alone in this and we can work with other schools and call them and reach out to them. And, and that's also uh, something I wanted to share. So look for resources at the diocese and look for resources uh, within schools around you or, or uh, you know, schools you can partner with and mentor with that can share this because we're really all in the same boat in terms of what we're trying to do. It may be different in your area and in your school uh, and some of your challenges, but, but we're all, uh, the mission of Catholic schools is maintained throughout the world. Okay. So, ben yeah. Bernard, one thing I did um, at the recommendation of my advisory board is to invest a little bit in um, uh, some billboards yes. to help with uh, logo and branding. And, um, one of the things that happened is one of my dads who has a, a he does property development. Um, he, he is paying for one of the billboards. We're actually splitting the billboard. Mm -hmm. That's one of these large billboards and half of it is uh, the school, you know, with the logo and um, s some other graphics. And then the other half is, is uh, a property that he is promoting, uh, but at the bottom of his, it has proud sponsor of our school, you know. Oh, um, nice. So that was that. That's a billboard that's not costing me anything because um, it was, uh, uh, I guess, you know, it was something he donated and he he had a name for it. It's not uncommon, evidently, uh, for groups to do this. Right. Right. Exactly. That there are people that want to help you, uh, not only with their wisdom and their insights and their and their time, but also their treasure. And if you don't ask, you'll never get. So, um, you know, I, I would leave you with this because we're coming up on the one hour mark and I want to honor this. I know you all are busy today and doing many things that uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. I need your help. Are you willing to help? And what a powerful question. And think of the times when you've been asked for help. It's really hard to say no to people that you admire and love and something you believe in. So let's not uh, think we're alone and let's not get isolated in our own concerns because there are people to help you, not only the people here with you today, but, but all of us at Catholic Vitality 360. This is what we're here for. And call us, drop us a line. We'll come to your school. We'll help you. We'll do some training. We can help you with the marketing plan. This is all part of our ministry and what we love to do. So... Um, 
Thank you all for being here today. The next session and topic, you'll check our email and websites and all that. We're looking at Friday, March 31st, uh, again, 11 a.m. We're going to dive into the seven circles of vitality, what that means for your school, and also something we're offering, uh, which is called a V7 leadership system. We can organize your school around the seven circles in terms of a leadership process, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, future topics will be enrollment. And then uh, in April, we're going to jump into some of this, April, May, the language of leadership and how to build trust. So drop us a line. Tell us what you think. Uh, we're open to any suggestions. Uh, we love doing this and uh, we love having y'all with us. Spread the word. You can bring as many people as possible. Uh, no cost at all. Uh, this is all for the edification of, of our Catholic schools. So. Thank you all for being with us today. Uh, we, we'd like to send you forward in faith uh, during the, uh, the 18th day of the Lenten season. And just some reminders about your faith. Bring Jesus Christ to the center of your life. Build good habits and daily habits as a growth process. Don't forget to surround yourself with good people. Uh, do what you say and build trust. Have a bold vision for your school and build a school, uh, a culture of vitality. And then always move forward with the three P's, prayer, patience, and persistence. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being with us. Watch our social media and connect with us. Send us an email about how we can improve this or topics you'd like. And uh, we love the work we do as a ministry, and we're here for you if anything you need. So without further discussion, we will close with a prayer. And in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for this season of Lent, for giving us the insight and the wisdom to move forward in faith. We ask you to bless our lives, to ask you to bring Christ into the center of our daily life, to move forward in faith, to move forward with our blessings, to think about life as a process of gratitude and growth. Thank you for being with us today. Ask all of, we ask you to bless all those with us and that the Lenten journey continue to expand into discovery, challenge, acts, and growth. For this we pray. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much. Uh, you're welcome to stay on if you'd like, if you have questions for us, but I'm going to officially uh, bring this to a close. Uh, email us, stay in touch, and thank you all so much for being with us. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.